I heard you like skulls. Well, I certainly hope you do because you clicked on this video. Today I'm going to show you how to make some really awesome skull dice, a touch of spooky and benevolence to them, and really get that organic bone feel so it doesn't just feel like a 3D printed miniature. Let's get started. First thing we need to do is make this go from digital to real. Aww. Guess it's the old fashioned way. After you've got your skulls 3D printed and cleaned up, you're gonna wanna mount them using hot glue and some toothpicks. This is gonna make it easier to handle while painting and priming and all around just make your life a little less frustrating. I'm gonna be using Citadel Wraithbone. It's expensive, but it's honestly the best primer I've used for miniatures. It just lays really even and dries insanely fast. While spray priming, you always wanna make sure you're doing light even passes and hitting it from every side and angle. It's better to do small layers and build it up than try to hit it all at one go because you'll end up with streaks and filling in all your details. Once your miniature skulls are primed and dried, you might be tempted to use them as they are, but we're going to employ miniature paints to make these skulls truly stand out. To make sure our colors meld seamlessly, I always start by applying a thin black wash. This ensures that not only all those little details like the crevices, eye sockets, and teeth and such, go ahead with your paper towel and blot up the excess. Oops. <laughs> well, we had to take the toothpick off sooner or later, so I may as well do it now for this one. We'll touch up the unprimed area and conceal that raw resin. Now, as the initial wash dries slightly, we're going to prep our next color, and that's by combining the polished bone with the leather brown from Vallejo. This mix will give us a beautifully weathered bone shade, and it's my go-to when doing any sort of creepy skulls or other naturalistic bone. Applying this, some of the black wash is gonna get pulled up and that's exactly what you want. It's gonna create authentic, naturally weathered look where it kind of blends and smudges. Don't fret, trust in the method and let the spontaneity take lead. After you've done that, go ahead with your paper towel and blot up the excess and then apply another very thin coat. This is where you wanna be careful to preserve the darker recesses. And as this thin layer dries, the undertones from below will subtly show through, adding a ton of depth. I then make sure to accentuate the teeth and any other details with another black wash, ensuring everything stands out, give it one more pat down and set it aside to dry. Remember, our goal here is not creating identical skulls. Consistency in our base wash and our colors and the process allows for natural variation to show up. And that makes sure that all of our skulls have that organic feel distinct from just 3D prints. With our initial skulls set aside and drying, I can use a toothpick and brush to intensify the darkness and really get in there to black out the eye socket and the nasal cavity. For the crowning touch, I'm going to add a speck of red to view these skulls with some benevolent eyes. I'll do that with a toothpick and that'll let me do a small little dot of red right into each eye socket. Now, I'm a human and nobody's perfect, so I've got to go back through and touch up the eyes for any red that got stuck on the edges or didn't quite get placed the way I liked it. Hi, I'm Alec. Do you or loved ones suffer from critical fail dice syndrome? A lot of times it's not the artist, it's the tools. I founded Drew a Dice with one goal, ending critical fail syndrome. And today we can make that possible. Our dice specialists through thorough research with scientists have found that one in five dice makers will succumb to critical fail syndrome at some point. Protect yourselves and your loved ones by shopping for dice molds, accessories, and inserts at druiddice.com. Now that we've got our skulls all prepped, it's time to mix our resin and actually cast these beautiful things. Now I'm using Art & Glow here because it's a fairly thin resin. And on top of that, I'm mixing it while it's in a bowl of hot water so it gets really thin. Gonna use a little bit of Riri's Brown and Lake Blue to really get the color I want on this. 
I'm going for kind of a foggy, spooky, greenish. Just enough color so that it doesn't obscure anything, but it's also not clear. The best way I find to do this is to just put a little dot of your alcohol ink on the mat and then you can go in and actually grab it with your popsicle stick, making sure you're mixing in little bits. Of course, we've got to add the sparkle with our glitter. Now into the vacuum chamber. This is what's really going to make sure all of the air bubbles that are trapped in the resin itself get out. Casting under pressure nine times out of 10 will do it for you. But to be perfectly honest, I didn't want to mess this up after putting all that work into painting these skulls. So I went ahead and hit it with a vacuum. Now that we've got this all debubbled, we can lay down our first layer and fill them dice up. Now I'm only filling it about halfway, just enough so that it's already has some resin in there because now I've got to get the air bubbles out of the moss itself. Because remember, it's trapping all the air on the inside. So we're going to throw those skulls in and pop this in the vacuum chamber itself. I love how cool this looks. Ah! Just all, you just see it sucking all the air out. And really saturate that moss with the resin and get as much of the air out as we can. Now it's not gonna get all the air out because it's such a thin layer of resin that as soon as I let air back in, it's able to go down lower and air is gonna get right back in there. But it's gonna get most of it saturated and that's what I want. You could just leave these to soak in resin for 30, 40 minutes before you put them in the mold. Now all that's left is just popping these amazing skulls into their homes and hoping and praying and wishing and dreaming and all the fun things that we do when we're casting that all this hard work doesn't go to waste. Twenty-four hours later. Ah, these are great. <laughs> but no time to waste. Let's get these in to their final resting place. Just gonna mix up another batch, and I'm actually gonna color match the same way I did before with one slight difference. I have this fog color from Breeze that will give it a little bit more darkness, and it just needed a touch of that in order to get the color right where I wanted it. Because I'm impatient, I'm using a polyurethane resin to cast the outer shell of these dice. So I'm really working under a time crunch. I have less than 10 minutes to get this into the pressure pot before it starts to cure. So I'm going super fast. It's always so satisfying. Now we're going to treat these just like we would any other blanks. Filling up our mold about a third of the way and popping our blanks in. This is where it's really important to make sure that you're putting the right dice face on the right face. For instance, if you wanted those skulls to face on the critical, you want to make sure you're putting them face down since the crit is on the bottom. All right, one last little coating to make sure all the numbers are filled. All right, let's pop this bad boy. No bad voids or anything. Oh, look at these guys. Yeah. 
I love it. I'm so glad I went ahead and mixed the outer shell color the same way so they just disappear. All right, let's get these guys cleaned up. These dice are fucking awesome. If I had to say so myself, they're one of the best ones I've made in a long time. I've really been lacking that creative zeal and I don't know, something about the spooky season and making some really cool evil skull dice with a touch of little nature to them. I just, I love it. If you're interested in making your own spooky dice, we have pumpkins, skulls, ghosts, graves, bones, a whole ton of awesome 3D printed inserts that you can paint following this video and come out with just as awesome results. Or you can make your own totally crazy thing. That's the thing I love about dice making is it's all about what you put into it and what makes you happy and your creative little touches. So check us out at druiddice.com. Comment with what kind of 3D printed inserts you'd like to see next and we'll randomly pick a winner. We'll make those and send them to you. Happy casting.